portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Tonight we're getting more clarification on the proposed Junk New Carnival's budget. While $9 million has been allocated for the festival, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie explained in the House of Assembly last night where that money will come from. Yes, the Prime Minister also confirmed how much government spends on Junkanu annually following criticism from the opposition that more money is being spent on Carnival than the country's number one cultural expression. The contribution of the government to Junkanu directly each year is about $3 million. Um, it, the, the, the bleachers alone cost just under half a million dollars. The monies that you put to seed groups around the country. So ultimately, when you add it up, in addition to which, Mr. Speaker, I mean, I personally, for example, just to give an example, sponsorship. Just as Carnival got a million dollars, when one adds up what is going to happen, that nine million is a budget figure. And if we could get eight million of that from private sector, the eight million will come. Already, BTC has given one million already, and there are other major sponsors on the line they are doing it. Because, and I think when they did it, they knew the competitor was going to put the money in. So there's, it attracts huge sums of money because of the visibility of it. It is not fair to see nine million as coming from uh, the Treasury, even though it has been budgeted as such, Mr. Speaker, because every effort is being made to get monies from the private sector. Somewhere down the line, someone messed that up. We had Janet Jackson to open up for. Somewhere again down the line, someone just decided they can jack that up. That's what happened at the Bahamas National Festival Commission press conference today as officials announced Bahamian acts to perform at Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival. However, Cleopatra Murphy tells us tonight the event was sidelined after one of the acts went off on a tangent. Bahaman founder Isaiah Taylor hijacked the press conference announcing Bahamian acts scheduled to perform at Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival. Taylor demanded to be immediately informed of the headliner his band would open for. I want to know the name of the headliner, not today, now. I need to know that because you put me in a bad position. I don't like it. We had Usher to open up for. Somewhere down the line, someone messed that up. We had Janet Jackson to open up for. Somewhere again down the line, someone just decided they can jack that up. Rihanna is another rumored act, but officials have yet to confirm who will take the stage. Bahamas National Festival Commission members Ed Fields, Freddie Munnings Jr., and Inga Boleg resigned from the commission after reports of too much political interference surfaced. Taylor fanned the flames today, inferring that there was interference. He says he does not blame the commission for any uncertainty. Fields and Munnings were at the press conference today, once again with the commission. I know it's not the commission, but it really makes the commission look bad also. Because the general public look at it as if it is the commission. No, it is someone above the commission jacking everybody up. It needs to stop. CEO of the Bahamas National Festival Commission, Roscoe Dames, said he could not disclose the headliner before negotiations are complete and that any announcements beforehand could compromise those negotiations. If we preempt that, it may interfere with the negotiation. However, Bahamas has been engaged to perform at the Music Masters concert and in due time we'll make the announcement on who Bahamas will be opening for. Bahamian acts also set to perform at Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival include Visage, T-Connection, and Jay Mitchell. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Also tonight, Minister of State for Finance, the Honorable Michael Halkita, says he's satisfied with the progress of value-added tax since its implementation on January 1st, and he anticipates that businesses are preparing to file their tax collections. He also noted that the government appears to be on target regarding revenue collection on VAT. The Minister of State for Finance updated us on how the customs revenue collection is going to be ahead of the mid-year budget communication expected to be delivered by Minister of Finance, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, in Parliament tomorrow. We had projected a collection of a total of $300 million over a full year, so, which is $150 million over six months. Um, the collections at the border by customs have been very positive. Traditionally, January is a very slow month for everything. And um, 
customs collected at the border in VAT just under $11 million, $10.9 million. They estimate that over the full year they will average about $15 million per month collecting at the border. Not speaking about you know businesses who collect and then file. This is just customs collecting at the border, and so they are, they are estimating about 180 million dollars to be collected by customs. Of course, we have to adjust that number to reflect some of the customs duties that we reduced. But early days, in terms of the collection, we're very very encouraged that we will meet the estimates that we had uh, put forth. Everything appears to be back to normal at D.W. Davis Junior High School today. This following the school closing its doors one day last week after officials confirmed several cases of scabies. Yes, Carla Palmer has this update from a special assembly held at the school this morning. Students at D.W. Davis Junior High School had another reason to celebrate being back in school this Tuesday following an outbreak of scabies last week. The more than 700 students appeared to be jolly and eager to get back in the classroom, but not before gathering for a special assembly in the school's gymnasium. Today we celebrate our support staff, our clerical workers, our janitorial workers, and our security staff for the stellar performance that they give each and every day in support of this A-team here at D.W. Davis Junior High School. The school's principal is Nicoletta Brown. It is really important to them because sometimes I think they feel unappreciated. Uh, sometimes they are the um, first line of defense for the school. They are the first persons to meet our visitors when they come on, on campus as well as our students. And we think it's only a fitting that we take this time out to uh, say thank you to them. Just days before, students were not allowed on campus, including the gym, as the entire school was closed for fumigation. And we are happy to say that in partnership with our health officials, we um, have everything under control and we're now back to normal. We were only out for one day for fumigation purposes. And teachers are satisfied that they are safe. Okay, and, the students. and students as well. You know, okay. parents are yeah, parents I'm sure were concerned, but we're, we're, we're pleased to say that our numbers um, in terms of screening were very, very minimal. Scabies results from a lack of personal hygiene. While Brown says health and family life is part of the school's curriculum, they are cognizant of the need for reinforcement. We are actually working in partnership with our parents to ensure that they um, look for the telltale signs so that they can also take their kids to the clinic to um, have them screened and checked by the doctor if there um, might happen to be um, a cause for alarm. And we've had our nursing officers um, to come in to speak with our children um, on a grade level basis. The school's principal says education in these circumstances remains key. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. All right, Carla, thanks a lot. Now, their man's best friend and a big part of the Atlantis security detail. You may not have known it, but the Atlantis Resort is home to a canine use unit all unto its own. Dogs not only sniff out any signs of danger at the property, they've also assisted in important operations like ensuring the safety of venues like the Thomas A. Robinson Track and Field Stadium during the IAAF World Track and Field Championships. Well, Keisha Adley got up close and personal with the canines to find out what a day on the job is like. She joins us live from Atlantis to tell us more. Keisha. Hello there, Chris and Charisma. Our viewers would remember that last night around this time, I was sitting here at Virgil's barbecue at the Atlantis Resort in front of a smorgasbord of ribs and wings, mac and cheese, collard greens, and all that good stuff. And I had a delightful watermelon margarita to wash it all down. But tonight, I've gone to the dogs, literally. <laughs> They're the very vocal 19 of the Atlantis Security K-9 unit. They may have playful spirits, but these dogs mean business. Derek Hall heads the Atlantis Canine Unit. Most of the dogs here are homebred German Shepherds who have a big job on and off property. Buster, that's a regular patrol dog that takes care of um, the marinas, the escort, and also the streets. Cable Jewel Piper, he also could track, he also could um, attack, do attack work if, if, if it's need be. Bradley dog is, like I say, it's dual purpose. That's a bomb dog, and it also could do the patrols. And also uh, will attack if need be. So have you had incidents here where these um, dogs proved vital? In my years, very few. The, 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 the fact that we had, we don't have much incident, 
is because we, we're vigilant in what we do. Um, we always um, <coughs> on the beat. A lot of people know that they're there, despite the fact that our primary found is at night. So we, we, didn't have, we don't have much incident that we really have. But if it happened, we are more incapable to handle it, the situation. Buster and Maverick were two of the first dogs we met up close. Maverick and his trainer, Bradley Woodside, decided to show us what they're made of. It took me a minute to warm up, but reluctantly, I decided to go in and say hello. I'm staying right behind you. Okay. Hi, Maverick. Oh, touching. Touching. Okay, not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> it's a happy ending. <laughs> okay. But were these dogs able to pass the sniff test? We took to an Atlantis storeroom as contraband was hidden in three spots. Then in came Killer. One, two, three. Mission accomplished. When it was time to leave, we decided to see if I could have a future in the canine unit. You want me to hold the chain? Sit. 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 <laughs> Almost. That was quite the adventure. But meantime, we're sitting here at the beautiful Atlantis Resort. Isn't this, this the perfect backdrop for your Valentine's uh, celebrations this Saturday or before? And so many other special uh, secluded locations here at the Atlantis Resort, just perfect for the occasion. But right now I'm joined by Mr. Douglas Hanna, and he's the senior vice president in charge of security and surveillance here at the property. And I met those uh, dogs today. It was a little scary, but they have a big job to do don't they, and a lot of ground to cover here at the resort. Good evening, yes they do. They're a big, big part of our service to our guests and to our property. Mm -hmm. And they've been around a long time. They've been around, well, the canine unit has been around yeah. a long time. Not those dogs No, not those ones, <laughs> not even their grandparents. Okay. But they've been around a long time. You know, we've evolved from the original role that the dogs played in keeping our property safe, controlling access, doing patrols. Uh, several years, for several years now, we've seen the need uh, for the dogs to evolve as our security team evolve. Mm -hmm. We now, we had to train multi-talented and multi-faceted dogs. Mm -hmm. As our security are multi-talented also. Yeah. We, we, we had issues where many of our guests and our patrons complained about persons trying to sell them narcotics drugs on our beaches and mm -hmm. even sometime in the front of our property mm -hmm. and so we had to get trained dogs who could determine hey does this person have narcotics we found narcotics found on mm -hmm. our property and so we got those dogs to be able to check those type of things all right and they seem to be up to the task from well, what I can up tell. To the task. <laughs> they're working well uh -huh. and we also have the capability for dogs to detect explosives mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot we have a lot of large events so mm -hmm. we have to ensure that our first persons who attend our events are protected so we have some dogs who can detect explosives and detect narcotics. All right, thanks a lot, Mr. Hanna. Good luck with the canine unit in the future. Oh, they're going to do good. All right. Well, we are again live from the Atlantis Resort at Virgil's Barbecue, a beautiful spot here for your Valentine's Day. We want to remind you to look out for the promo code. It's coming on, uh, coming up later on in the newscast. Then you'll go to www.znsbahamas.com and you'll have a chance to wine and dine your Valentine right here at the Atlantis Resort comes Saturday. Back to you in the studio. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.